What happens here. when you combine this the largest broadcaster in America American with a puny broadcast network? Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, and this is the Ramble, and we go on till midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, out in San Francisco, California, resides one of the funniest people I know. His name? Will Will Durst. Will Durst. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, do you remember when that town was rotten with comedy talent? God. Oh, yeah, I mean, it really was, wasn't it? I mean, if we started naming the people who came out of San Francisco, uh, it's it's amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, we, we, st- we can start off with just saying uh, Robin Williams, you know, and... Robin Williams, Dana Carvey, uh, uh, Ellen DeGeneres. Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider. Those would probably be the, I would say those would be the four that made the most money. And uh, the other guy would be probably people no one ever heard of would be Rob Becker. Rob Becker. Explain why he made a lot of money. I had heard that. Okay. But uh, I, we, I, I remember we started the exact same month in uh, open mics, the Holy City Zoo, March of 81. And Rob did comedy for a while. He's very likable. And, uh, and he, about seven years into it, he decided to do a one-man show called Defending the Caveman, mm-hmm. which uh, started, the, did the improv in San Francisco, didn't do too well, went down to San Diego, not too well, then went to Dallas, and then it caught on there, and then he took it to New York. Uh, I think it was actually the longest-running play on Broadway. It ran forever on Broadway. Really? And he, he made, he told me, he got, he got bored, so he sold it. And he told me he made $15 million performing it, and he sold it for $47, $47 million? Yeah, so it's, it's being played around the world by different actors now, by the company that bought it. I don't know who they were. But... Wow. Wow. Yeah. So he's a multimillionaire. So he, yeah, he's got a big house in Ross, and he just uh, enjoys life now. Wow. Now, you see, I would not... Back then, if you were to say, uh, who would be a big success in this business? I would give you a whole bunch of names, and Rob Becker would never be one of them. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought he was an okay comic, but he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, what, $75 million worth? <laughs> well, I don't think anyone's 75 mil. <laughs> well, he made that much off of defending the caveman, you said. He made like about... Yeah, it's pretty amazing. 47, and, let's see, 47, 62 mil. 62 mil. Okay. Yeah. Be that as it may, if you had said to me that Rob Becker, off his comedy, as I knew it at the time, okay, was going to wind up making $62 million, I'd go, Yeah. are you nuts? You know, yeah, right? I don't see it. You know, a funny guy. I, I may hire him for a show or something like that because I know he's a professional and get out and make people laugh. But he's, yeah, he was likable. He always he always killed with the audience. I think what he, he was smart by the fact that early on, yeah, HBO won. Hey, we want to tape this and show it, and he goes, "No, I'll tape it, and we're going to pay him like half a million." And he said. They'll show that and it'll be done. I'd have to write a whole new play again or something. And well, was that the case? He made much more, oh, much they... more money by not going to TV with it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, I and I never. Did you ever see the show, The Defending the Cave? I never saw it. No. Uh. Uh-uh. I'd heard about it. You know, and who was the other guy? Uh, oh God, they made him. Rick move. Reynolds. What, what did he have? What did he do? Was he, he had only the truth is funny. That was a good one. I did see that one. Yeah, well, uh, no, but I'm thinking of who am I thinking of uh, about uh, he did this thing about women and men. 
And, uh, oh, God, I'm trying to remember what it was called. They made it into a movie. Oh, um, he's not that into you. He's that, yeah, he's he's not that into you. Who's that? That was Greg Barrett. Greg, Greg Barrett. Barrett. And, Greg, and by the way, very nice guy. I, I really yeah. like Greg. Very I guy. have very fond memories of my time with Greg. But, I mean, on the other hand, another comic that you go, what? You know, he's going to have books. He's going to have movies. He's going to have this. He's going to have that. Very successful. A TV show for a while that Oprah produced. Oh, she did produce he, a show with him. Yes. And he, it didn't last long. And he told me, this is really interesting, because he wanted to be famous so bad. So I got that. He got the, he, I think he wrote the book, but got made into a movie. And then Oprah gave him a TV show. And he said he'd been doing the show about a week. And he said he realized, he said, it's one thing getting famous. He said, the, the thing that's harder than getting famous is staying famous. <laughs> and he said uh, it looked like way too much work to do that. Wow. It, well, it, it's got to be. Which, which makes sense. I mean, the guys that get famous and stay, uh, you know, no one works harder than George Lopez. But if you want to be famous, you really got to work like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He you got to promote the show, and you're yeah. working a lot. Yep. Uh, you know, but, I mean, it, 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 it is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. And uh, But he had made enough money with the book and with the movie and all of that, you know, that I don't think he has to worry about. I think he moved, I think he moved to uh, Europe and said he was, who or was it somebody else I'm thinking of that went to Europe and became a Tom big... Tom Rhodes did that. Yes, Tom Rhodes. A uh, big star. Had a show in, uh, had a TV show in Holland. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. These are, these are comics. Had, he, by the way, he I, had a sitcom for a year on uh, was it uh, CBS called Mr. Rhodes. You're right. You're right. Yeah, but these are all comics that most people who we're talking right now never really heard of. Or no, they heard of them. They're saying whatever happened to him, you know. Um, Tom is still uh, Tom is still performing. I see his name occasionally. I'm not sure what Greg is doing. Yeah, Greg Barrett. Uh, I I haven't heard B Bupkus about him in a long yeah, time. Yeah, he was a great, a very nice guy. I loved Greg. Yeah, yeah, really nice guy. But you know, a nice never made me laugh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, mean makes people laugh. So, well, I mean, if I were to say who are the funniest comics that I've ever known uh you would be in that top 10 you know wow maybe top five well because you're consistently your material is is sharp and it's witty and it always hits its mark okay you may not think so but it does take it from me your yeah, old well. pal <laughs> al okay um uh, uh but let's, let's name our top five uh okay you go, you Bobby go, Slayton? you go with one. Well, I was going to say Bobby Slayton, so I guess we both agree he's number one, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Jeremy Kramer. Jeremy was uh, my absolute idol when I first started. He kind of took me under his wing. Yeah, for people sure. People are listening to us right now, and they're going, "Who?" Exactly. Uh, this, so he was uh, he call, was called a comics comic. Well, that that's what I said. Uh, I've told people that when they say you're the comics comic, that's a curse. It's a curse. Horrible curse, yeah. Yeah, because what happens is you then rely on that to get you by. You know, you're the comics comic, so anything you say is funny. You know, and and literally, I mean, he was the comics comic. I mean. Where did yeah. uh, where did uh, uh, Robin go whenever he had to steal a joke? <laughs> he went to he, he went to to, to um, uh, Kramer, you know, and had, yeah, and he was he was prolific. He wrote every time I'd see him, he'd have like, seemed like twenty new minutes, and just yeah, amazing, just amazing, and just so different, very different. And it was a weird kind of different too. It was yeah. You know, uh, it was it was catchphrases. He would say something, and it wouldn't be funny, and then he'd keep repeating it over and over and over and over until it became funny. 
Yeah. And uh, he was, I, I thought he was going to be huge. And then I realized, oh, I didn't realize that he didn't have mass appeal. <laughs> well, is it mass appeal or is it drive? You know, once everybody says you're the comics comic, you feel you don't have to work hard. You mm -hmm. know, why should I push myself? You know, people know I'm the comics comic. Shouldn't I be able to rest on those laurels? And I'm saying that's where it's a curse. Um, yeah. The fun, and the funniest guy, well, let's see the other one. It was uh, Steve Pearl. Steve Pearl, I would put, I, 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 my, probably my top five, yeah. yeah. He, pro he probably would be inched out of the top five if Warren Thomas were still alive. Warren, yeah. Warren was, I think we'll agree, one of the funniest people we ever knew in our lives. You know, and everybody. Right. And again, again everybody, the every, problem with uh, he was not. Uh, what's the word? Uh, he had no con not control, but uh, not a lot of focus because he was supposed to do the Letterman, and uh, he went back to New York for the final run through, and he just riffed his entire set, and they didn't let him go on. Well, because that what that was the nature of what he did. He was yeah. one of the all time great riffers. You know, and did everything. Yeah, probably, the, probably, probably the greatest river we know, right? Yeah, yeah. When I would get he and Pearl together on a show, I would just stand back and <laughs> yeah. let them go loose, and just sit there for an hour, and you get a very funny hour, and I didn't have to say anything. You yeah, know? I I saw Robin and Pearl one night do that, and. Uh, it looked like two insane men just going on for 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but it was brilliant. Um, let me see here. Uh, now we're naming people who are alive now, right? I would put Chris Rock in there. Chris Rock, yeah, yeah. Although the, the problem I had with Chris Rock, and I, I said this many years ago, and I... I prob I don't know that it still holds or not. He's actually turned into a very good actor, <clears throat> which is a a better place for him to be. Uh, but uh, uh, the thing that always bothered me about him is he would do jokes like, you know, the trouble with white people is blah 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 blah. And I wanted to know how that was any different than me getting him and saying, you know, what the trouble with black people <laughs> is blah 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 blah. You know, I just wondered why nobody ever said, hey, you're a racist. But if I did the same exact material about black people, I would be a racist. So, I mean, I didn't like the fact that he, 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 he his whole act was like, and then when white people do this and white people do that. And, you know, I, it's not that I can't laugh at myself, but it was pretty cheap jokes. You know, so, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but I do realize why he was great. You know, uh, and and yeah. people I respect think he's great. So I will go on with that. Uh, okay, who else have we got in our list? Who else? Uh, it's funny. I see a lot of them came out of San Francisco. But... Yeah, uh, uh, Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey, very funny guy. Um, funny because among other things he had a problem and it wasn't being the comics comic his problem was as a young guy he was too cute to do comedy yeah he was like when he was 25 he looked like he was 14 yeah and he would come out on stage and kill just kill yeah you know uh, and, and so he got around that. In fact, I think he even used to mention that in his act to kind of diffuse it, you know. Uh, but he he's a, you know, to this day, I think he's a, he's a brilliant comic. Um, now, let's talk about dead people for a second. Uh, who am I thinking? What's his name? See, my mind these days is terrible when it comes to remembering names, so I have to go to you because you're my... Uh, <laughs> You're you're my equivalent of a guide dog. Um, uh, what's his name? Well, I did, who, who played Uncle Dead Comics? Uh, would certainly be Robin. Uh, well, yeah, but Uncle Buck on TV. What's his name? Uh, 
John Candy. No, 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 no. On TV. Oh, well, Kevin Meany. Kevin Meany. Kevin Meany, I think, one of the funniest people I've ever known. Just absolutely brilliant. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, he kind of he kind of hit with the... Uh, he almost was the comics comic that also hit with the uh, regular audience, too. Mm-hmm. Comics would just die when Meany was on. Well, Meany, uh, I was talking about Kramer doing this. Meany was the exponent of taking something and then driving it into the ground. <laughs> uh, like, who, who would think you would laugh at a line like, we're not, we're big pants people. We're big pants people. Yeah, but and, and, no, <laughs> and nobody would laugh at that, but he keeps saying it over and over again until it finally became funny. Yeah, I mean, you had to admit that, that Kevin Meany had more guts on stage than any comic you've ever known. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, with the possible exception of, and I bring him up, he's dead too, and a good friend of mine, I love the guy dearly, was Gilbert Gottfried. Gilbert Gottfried was fearless. He didn't care. Uh, absolutely, yeah, for sure. He did. <laughs> to the point where it cost him some work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, I mean... He did, what did, the joke he did about, like, it was a month, a week after 9-11, <laughs> he did some joke about a plane that was just... I don't forget what the joke was. I remember people were just horrified <laughs> at some show in New York. And that lost him the uh, Aflac account. That he, was he, a, that he, lost the Aflac was something about the tsunami in Japan, yeah. Oh, really? Okay, it was another thing that he said. Yeah, it was another. That was that was not the first one. <laughs> but he was, yeah, he was. I loved Gilbert. Yeah, he got to a point where he could go on stage and say just about anything, and get away with it because it was Gilbert. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh -huh. it's, it, that's okay. That's Gilbert. <laughs> he had a joke where he said, I'm at a cocktail party, and I went up to Coretta Scott King, and he said, well, at least he wasn't shot robbing a liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I know that. Remember one. that one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm talking about, about having guts, you know? Yeah. <laughs> There's a double whammy there, I think you will agree, comedically, that you have to be able to achieve. You have to be able to tell that joke, as tasteless as it is, and have everybody realize there's no malice in your heart telling it. Yeah. And he was always so joyful about this stuff that you just never, you never said, oh, he's <laughs> racist or he's anti-Semitic or whatever, you know. Uh, you could pull that Coretta Scott King joke and, you know, to him, nothing was too early <laughs> or too late. Um, yeah, too, too soon. Kinnison, Kinnison could kind of pull that off, too. Yeah, yeah. Kinnison was good at that. Was Kinnison a good comic, do you think? I, I think there was a period there where he may have been the best, yeah. yeah. Then he got sidelined by the rock and roll, and uh, I think the drugs kicked in. <laughs> but it was just... Yeah. Yeah, there was a couple of years there. He was just so funny. Well, I got to know him pretty well, and I liked him a lot. Yeah, he was a decent guy. You know, I, I think his first shot on Letterman might be one of the best TV shots I've ever seen a comic do. Really? What's the worst? Yeah. I bet you can tell me the worst. Well, <laughs> there's, been, there's a lot of comics that bombed on the old Letterman show because the audience wasn't mic'd, and yeah. But who was who the worst? Who bombed the... You did very well on Letterman. You, I did okay the first one. Well, yeah, I've, but, looked at, uh, I've looked at that, and I've looked at the second one. They're both available on YouTube. And uh, oh, the first one, you were very good, but the second one, you killed. And the reason was is that I suddenly realized you don't belong on a stage. You belong on TV because they can do a close-up. <laughs> And there are looks on your face that go along with the comedy that is just extraordinary. But, you know, and that's why I think you did so well on the Letterman show the second time, especially the first time, too. 
Yeah. yeah. Tried to mug a little, not over the top, but uh, yeah. I guess it does. it shows up much better on camera well, than in a well, darkened club. Well, on TV they can get that hang dog look, you know, and you can play on that. Uh, and I was going for the Buster Keaton look, yeah. Well, there was one thing you did on, on, on one of those shows that you just got a laugh off a look. And I can't remember <laughs> which one it was. But I'll have to, I don't remember that one. But Yeah, but it just, it, they, you, did, you told a joke, they laughed, and then you looked at them with a look, and they laughed a second time. And I'm trying to remember what that was. But anyway. Yeah, I'll have to but, check that but out. you did very well. But who did terribly on the Letterman show? Come on, you know. Uh, oh, Will didn't have a great set. Will Durst had the maybe the worst set anybody's ever seen, and the reason was he was given bad advice by the producers. You know, because when you do your act, people don't know this on those shows. You pull, do go to a club and then you do your five ten minutes that you're going to do on the TV show. And the person from the Letterman show was there. And then he tells you, well, don't do this, do this, do that, right? Am yeah. I right? They, ed they edited it heavily, yeah. And it, they, uh, you're not supposed to s sway from that. Yeah. And so uh, if you then do what they tell you to do and you're not getting laughs, what are you going to do about it? You know, you just sit there with flop sweat. Uh, but uh, apparently Morty gave Will some bad advice. And uh, and the only other legend about Will Durst was when he lost somebody. Um, how much was it? Half mil. Half a mil on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Because he was the phone of friend. Yeah. And he, he immediately came up with the answer, but it was the wrong answer. I knew that immediately. And um, the guy lost all that money. Uh, and I think he Yeah, always, he went from... He would have had a half million, and he, he left at thirty-two thousand. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, but that's it. That, but yet, in in Will, you had, I would say, one of the hardest working comics in the business. Would you agree? Yes, and uh, the, uh, the most polished. Uh, the most polished. That I never worked on. But, yeah, I, I mean, just really worked and rehearsed. And, yeah, and as a like result, you said he worked hard. As a result, had a very good entertaining act. Yeah. You know. So if I were to talk about professionals in this business, I'd have to put Will in my top five, you know? Okay. Um, but what happens to all these comics that we really loved and thought were great? Like, you know, what happened to Kramer? Kramer did nothing. Kramer was on a couple episodes of Curb Your Enthusiasm, I think, and that was about it. You yeah, know, I think I, he would have been a great character actor. And what's he doing now? I haven't heard from him in ages. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, what, selling real estate? You know, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. But what a waste. He was like, the, he was, he was the, to us, he was the comedy genius. You know? Yes. Um, yes, folks, I know Robert, you're saying. Robert, Robert, Robert Gordon's selling real estate now. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I know he's doing that. I saw him. What was it? Uh, about uh, well, less than a year ago at uh, Checky's uh, Memorial. And oh, I, really? I hadn't seen Morty in years, you know. Uh, and I always like him. In fact, I'm, I, I'm supposed to give him a call <laughs> and, and do an interview with him. I really should. Uh, you should. Because I, uh, my, my shot on Letterman was the first Letterman show he produced. Yep. Yeah, he was the producer on the. He was the. He was the. After they got rid of uh, the guy who was, had done. Second City. Yeah, I think he was a segment producer. Then they got rid of Barry Sand. Barry and he Sand, and then he became the producer, and he was the producer well into the Letterman CBS shows. And then yeah. Letterman fired him for some reason. I think they had a falling out. I don't know what over. Some kind of falling out. I think in later years, Letterman said to Morty, uh, the biggest mistake I ever made was getting rid of you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You don't hear that that often from Dave, but, you know. That was, that was. Didn't you say Morty sold you cable here? <laughs> yes, if, if he came by. He was selling cable door to door, and he was oh, trying wow. to. I already had cable, so I didn't need it. But he and Stu Smiley, who then went on to be the head of comedy over at Showtime, uh, were the two guys going door to door. And he told me, and years later, he said, 
you know, Midnight Blue, which was a show that I did, he said, sold us more um, more subscriptions than any other reason outside of Chinese programming in Chinatown. He said, uh, you, you, you just, you made me, he said, you made me quite rich at the time. Thank you. Yeah. I said, thank you, Morty. <laughs> and wow, we, that's great. Yeah. Well, if you yeah. say hi for me, if you, if you do a show. I think it was quickly, we had a little, we don't, we're running out of time here, but it was Morty, I think, that I squired around to a couple of comedy venues in, in San Francisco to go see comics. And I think it was Pearl that he saw. And he said, this guy is great. He said, but I'm getting people for Dave, not for me. And he said, he isn't for Dave. There was something, you know, he had to, he had to second guess what Dave would like or not like and not just book people based on what he had seen and thought was funny. You know, so anyway, yeah. that's my little tale out of school. Anyway, uh, we were running out of time. Uh, and we will continue to do this as an audio only, I suppose, because now you've gone, you've gone back to being the biggest Luddite of all time. I, I got my title back, yeah. <laughs> you got your title back. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is. That's Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Happy New Year, Alex. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before yeah you know it, just like larry right he gets high speed internet and uh, then we figure well, well you know maybe we can do a zoom with him you can finally see him and he decides uh it was too expensive <laughs> he didn't like it he didn't think it was worth it Oh, Larry, 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 what are we going to do with you? Well, anyway, it's time for us to, uh, oh, man, my eyes are burning tonight. And listen, something's always wrong with me, okay? So it's just all the problems of getting old, folks. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, let's bring in uh, some people who are waiting out there to be um, part of this rather futile uh, thing that we do here uh, at night, and uh, let me. Uh, <clears throat> boy, I'm garg my throat is gargly tonight. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good. Okay, I guess. Yeah. Okay. You have to. You have. To, when I say that, I'm saying that because I want to be able to hear your voices to make sure that you, you know. You're check one two. Check one yeah. two. Hey, Hello. Hey, that's good. Good. Testing. Testing. We're on the playoffs. What? We're, We're all in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Josh's team is in the playoffs also. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Explain this to me, okay, Mr. Well, now, now Bree just messed it up. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> what Thanks that? a lot, Bree. What no, I think Bree, you like Pittsburgh, right? The Steelers are in the playoffs, aren't they? Bree, did you hear them? Uh, hi, everyone. How are you? But uh, <laughs> I guess you didn't hear me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, they were they were just uh, they were saying that you're. Oh, look at that. There they are. Those famous towers in uh, Kuala yeah. Lumpur, right? That's right. Okay. Uh, what do they What do they call the, <clears throat> the, the Patronus Twin Towers? The Patronus yeah. Twin Twin. Oh, forget it. Patronus Twin <laughs> Towers. I just had my lunch inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't have to see you eating yeah, today. That's right. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Good. I had, and then I had my dessert and my green tea matcha at Kenny Hills Coffee. I don't know if that's a United States. No, uh, I never heard of them. chain. I'm not sure. Maybe yeah. Benny Hills Coffee. Did you say? <laughs> Benny Hills. Kenny. Kenny. Kenny with a K. I know. I love Benny Hill as, when I was a kid. I didn't like the three. I didn't like the three Stooges. I didn't really like the slapstick stuff, like Three Stooges or. But Benny Hill was 
as a kid, you know, he's he he picks up the playing cards and he's playing with the nurses that barely have any clothes on already. And so they're playing strip poker and he pulls up his cards and he's got like four aces and he starts trembling, you know, because <laughs> the next part of clothing is showing something, you know. Oh, my God. So you know, funny. that was considered maybe the worst show in the history of television. Good. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. <it>. And that, <laughs> terrible. Just like the three three Stooges were the worst comedy team of all time, but so what, you know? Some I never found the Three Stooges funny, by the way. But yeah, I I never did. I, a lot of people loved them, but I didn't. Love them. Yeah, but Benny Hill, you know, <laughs> there, there was something about him. Boy, my camera is all screwed tonight. You know, it's glitching. I don't care. I don't care anymore. I'm giving up on everything. Oh, look. Look who's sneezing, too. Oh, look at me. And look at uh -huh. him. See? Yeah, I, I came back to Louisville last couple of days. A lot of people were sick over the holidays. A lot of people had a little flu going on. Well, I haven't gotten any <laughs> yeah, flu. Yeah, COVID is big there now. What? You guys got a resurgence in COVID. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, we got COVID. We got a resurgence of everything. You know, we got, uh, what What do we got? RSV. Yeah. Yes. Uh, flu, RSV, and everything. Uh, we need a little bit more resurgence because Daddy needs a new car. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. You don't need a big, big. But everybody just get a little bit sick so that he can. Just a little bit. Sell his his wares, as it were. We had ten thousand people that died of COVID in the last month in December. Really? In the United States. So, well, if they yeah. if they tested and they got early detection, they'd be fine. Yep. Yeah, now watch. I will, I will say did. to everybody they're, out there, if you're not vaccinated, good get test kits. Yeah, if if you're va if not vaccinated, get vaccinated. And I just said that, right? Told Is everybody there, to do that. I'll probably get demonetized or something. Oh, because wear, I, because and I, wear a mask. You know, just giving are you, people. Are you monetized? Money. You're getting money, Alex. Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big time. Buy that round trip ticket to KL. Oh. Oh wait! Wait till you get the residuals, Bree. Just check your mail. All right! <laughs> wow! I'll never have to work again. Well, it's unbelievable. As, as we're soon, all retired. As soon as I get this money, I'm supposed to get. Uh, I'm. We're, we're we're getting out of here. I. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to walk by then. You know. Uh -huh. so. Just tell me where you're going. I'll meet you there and help you. Don't worry. Oh, okay. All right. I I always have this uh, recurring dream that I'm gonna live in a. A, a hut in the Philippines, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a water well with a pump next to it, and uh, you know grow my own. I'll be a sustenance farmer, and like that's how I'm gonna end up. I have that same dream, but it's a sump pump. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it sumps with and never mind. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, hi. I'll be hi. like go down. Hello to Josh. How are you, Josh? Good. How you doing? Yeah, no, I'm doing okay. You? Yeah, pretty, pretty good, I guess. Yeah, he's he's always thrilled about his life. I, I'm okay. I'm all right. Okay, right. Uh, let me see here. And uh, uh, Charlie, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Got to train some more umpires tomorrow. You got to train umpires tomorrow? Yeah, we got a new season starting next month. Let me get some new blood in. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you hear, this is, this is amazing. Did you hear what they are looking to ban in Florida, in schools no. and libraries? Yeah, the dictionary. The dictionary. Well, it's got bad words in. <laughs> because in, it has intelligence? the, because it, <laughs> it has the word sex in it. Yep. <laughs> I mean, this is getting this is getting absurd. Ay, ay, ay. This is terrible. Well, look, a nice sunny day in Kuala Lumpur. What's the temperature there? Um, you know, I don't know, but it it feels to me about seventy seven. Oh, really? That's that's reasonable. Yeah, yeah. maybe eighty. Yeah, I'm sure it's a little warmer, but it's a nice breeze, and I'm in the shade. So. But you must oh, you must lo you must love it when a typhoon comes in. <clears throat> oh, we don't get typhoons here. You don't get typhoons no. there? No, no earthquakes, no typhoons. KL wow. is really 
nice. It's really nice. Really? Amazing. Yeah, That's it's amazing. Because I, I would imagine, you know, there were all kinds of weather problems in that part of the world. But no, you're fine. Not in this place. Now, the thing at the top of the Petronas Towers that goes between them, is that an actual bridge? It is, yes. And you can go from one tower to the other on it? You can, yep. And this is actually no longer the tallest building. They just completed uh, the world's second tallest building. Uh, it's called Merdeka. And it's, I think, Samsung. It was behind it. I don't know if we can see it. I'll have to. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Right, he's going to turn his camera around or something. Or we lost yeah, we'll him. Lose connection. I guess we oh. lost him. Oh, yeah. He moved out in the Wi Fi range. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody look up. <laughs> you know when you see something you're looking up everybody looks right, up there you go yeah it's like oh, here oh right there uh, oh, oh. Ah, you see a little see. what is the you world, see it yeah what is the world's tallest building is it still the Burj Khalifa oh, wait, yeah the Burj Khalifa my old hometown of Dubai so you just you're just following all the tall buildings huh yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I was in Taiwan one night yeah. And that one was going. Yeah. Yeah. Burj Khalifa is be it looks like it's beautiful. You know. Oh, it Why is. Why don't you walk over there and get us a close up picture? Oh, okay. Why? I mean, it's, it's fine looking at it from mean? this distance. And uh, who, are you running the show now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be happy to give you a tour of KL. I know it so well. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Singapore and Dubai and Shanghai and Taipei. Yeah. Uh, these have been my, and uh, Bangkok, I was just in Bangkok for, I celebrated the new year in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Taipei, I am a Taipei, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm A plus. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> I'm A plus. Yep. Oh boy. Okay. Here comes Jeff Stein. He's entering oh, but our. You, but so Alex, a uh, question for you. I. Uh, we, I was watching Monk last night. We, we're we're on season eight, going through it all again. Mm -hmm. oh. And there's uh, the the woman from the first season. Oh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Played. Jeff has a problem. Bangkok. I was just in Bangkok for I still look for the New Year in Bangkok. <laughs> uh, How's that? There you go. Bravo! Let's all hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. yeah. Now, now you have to clean your lens. <laughs> no, not that lens. Your camera lens. Really? Yeah. yeah. Really. I think it's overdone lights above you. It looks yeah, like you know, it, if you clean your lens, it'll be a little bit clearer. No, I think it looks like Tony came over to your house and gave you his yeah. camera. Yeah. Use one of the dirty socks to clean the lens. Not the screen, Jeff. The lens. The oh, camera. Oh, lens. The, that, oh, that. Now it's. Oh like, man, you made it worse. A little one. No, wait a minute. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Me, it looks like uh, you're in jail. It looks like you're yeah. in jail. So, yeah. No, it looks like uh, the little thing try, beam me try, up, you know? Try, beam me up, try, try, try cleaning it again a little bit. Okay. okay. Let me get something better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Actually, it's clear if you kill the overhead lights. Well, yeah. it, it isn't. The overhead lights are smearing down because the, the, the smear is on the lens. The lens, yeah. Let's see. Here we go. He's a good. Oh, it looks like he's getting Windex. That's a big kitchen. We're getting Windex here. I wish you people who are listening to this on audio could see this. He's getting Windex. Look at that. There's some Windex. Okay, now he's yeah. going to splash the front of the camera with the Windex. Uh, use it. You got it oh, turned oh, on. There oh, you go. There we go. He's going to put that oh. on there. And then he's going to clean. There we go. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that is so perfect. You're uh, you look absolutely clean. Well, yeah. I appear while, while I'm there. <laughs> yeah, and uh, bring the camera a little more down so that you're in the center, and yeah. uh, that's terrific. Uh, wait a minute, is that in the back? Is that a Christmas tree I see? No. What what is that? Christmas tree is gone. Really? What's the way in the back? It looks like there's something like on the. It's on the refrigerator or something. Uh, refrigerator magnet. Magnets. Magnets. Oh, really? Are those refrigerator magnets on your refrigerator? Yeah. Could be, yeah. 
Oh, okay. All right. Okay, you're yeah, in the... I'm, it's going to be so cold tonight. Oh. And rainy. So well, I moved a little bit away. Well, our landlord here forgot what uh, turning on the heat is all about. <laughs> yeah. And last night it was freezing in here. Just freezing in here. Hey, the cold uh, will do you good. <laughs> you don't control your heat in your apartment. It keeps you healthy. Yeah. Oh. So, Alex, have you heard about all of these Orthodox Jew guys in, in, in the or, or, Orthodox Jew guys? <laughs> Where? Where? In the, in Brooklyn, yeah, they got two buildings, mm -hmm. and their their synagogue thing was in one building. There's, wait a minute, this Jew guy synagogue things. Okay, Orthodox what people. kind of a Jew are you? <laughs> anyway, they drilled a hole underneath from under one building to the other. One synagogue to another. Well. From one house to another, and they had one synagogue. So they built a tunnel that you could get right underneath. They never got any any approval or anything. <laughs> <laughs> and now, and they were complaining with the police. They they took, and I think eight of them had, got arrested. <laughs> And they're taking their building away, and oh, they're incredible reading. These were the Orthodox Jews out there, right? Yes. The yes. Hasidim, as we call them, yeah. uh, or as we call them in other parts of the city, a bad landlord. You know? <laughs> right. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, they feel like they live in their own world, and they work by their own rules. And how dare you tell us that we can't build a tunnel underneath our, you know, our yeah. houses or whatever. Well, you know that they have a, a rabbi that they all think is the best rabbi that they ever had. Yeah. And a lot of people think the guy died. But a lot of them say, no, he really didn't die. He's, you won't find him, but he's still here. Is his name Bernie going to Bernie's house? The old guy <laughs> Ber Bernie the him. rabbi, right. Yeah, yeah Bernie the rabbi. Crazy people. Oh boy, what a town! <clears throat> what a town we live in! What a town we live in! So, uh, anything in the news that's floating your boat, Josh? Uh, well, I mean, there was some stuff this week, I suppose. I um, I guess we were disappointed Trump didn't handle his own closing argument, or. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's not decided yet. I heard that he mm. made a scene a few times or something like that, but I'm not sure how bad it was, but he was going to do his own thing, I guess, but apparently he changed mm. his mind, or maybe it's not decided yet. Have, I don't, maybe they haven't done it yet. Maybe it's not something. I, like I think that they did, he, I think they already did their closing arguments, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, is it all over, Charlie? Do you know that, if it's all over now? I think they finished closing arguments today. I don't know if there's any. I think the judge has got to still come up with his. Maybe it's you know, done then. I'll bet he already has it written. <laughs> but he, uh, so apparently didn't do it because he didn't like the rules that if he was going to. Well, he spoke for five minutes. Um, he just didn't follow the rules. And so the judge. Yeah. So, if he, you know, if he was going to, you know, like, you know, there is some rules apparently that he didn't like that says if you're going to give a closing argument about a court case during the closing argument you're supposed to talk about the court uh, case the court case right and you he know, was going to give which a... apparently bugged him so you know yeah, i mean he was that he rubbed was... him the wrong way so yeah. he just like a child he just didn't do it you know <laughs> he was kind of planning on doing a um a, what do you call it a uh a, a political speech yeah. yeah i mean apparently you can't have a fox news town hall as your closing argument for your court case. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. you know totally a violation of his constitutional rights but <laughs> do you know that that judge is a liberal so what do you expect that town hall that he did got four and a half million views yeah. 
I mean, what I was what's, it. The, what's that all yeah, about? Yeah, but they, a lot of people voted twice. <laughs> but in the end, I, I don't mean, get that joke, but we'll think about it. <laughs> get back you know, to you. I mean, in the end, it's okay because four and a half million people watched it. Uh, I get, you know, if that's the number. And that is a lot. Of people, and that's a lot for that. Well, Nikki Haley right. and 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 what's his name, Doofus, uh, Ron DeSantis, were over on I think CNN doing yeah. it, doing their debate, and they only got like half a million. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but I guess when you consider, you know, the Saturday night NFL playoff game this Saturday will probably get forty five million. It's really not that big a deal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, you know, and that's probably like a realistic number. So, I mean, you know, it's so it's not like the whole country really is watching it. It's just the people that think he's a god, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I don't know that. It, I, I mean, I'm just saying I don't think anybody tuned in and was like, "Wow, I think I'm going to vote for him now." He sounds really smart. <laughs> I mean, I think it was mostly just people who already are going to vote for him and, you know, jerked off while he spoke or whatever it is they do when they watch his town halls. But, mm. you well, know, I, I think that was. But, I mean, the good news for Trump is that, according to his lawyers, if he loses this case in New York, all he has to do is wait, get reelected. Order a SEAL team to kill the judge, and then he'll be perfectly fine. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, you know, because his, his lawyers in a separate case went to a court and argued that he could order a military team. Uh, they well, they, they asked the six, lawyer. They asked, which they asked, I'm sure they don't appreciate having their name invoked as many times as it was. Mm -hmm. But apparently, he can order a clandestine military operation to assassinate well, a political what rival. Happened as is, long as he's president, when he does yeah. it, it's okay. One of the uh, appeals court judges said to the lawyer, yeah, does this right. mean, if you're looking for immunity for him because he was president, that he could order a SEAL team strike on uh, one of his enemies and right. have him killed, yeah. and that would be okay? And, yeah. and the lawyer said, yes. Right. <laughs> I know, I heard it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what, I mean, you know, yeah, sure. I, mean, I, just, I don't get it. I mean, what are these people thinking? I, 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 I mean, I can't offer, like I said before, I studied history, not psychology. So you have to go talk <laughs> to someone else. I mean, I. And by the way, speaking. You know, of, I'm not even joking. I mean that. I mean, I studied history. I did not study psychology. I mean, and I honestly think that's the people that can answer that question because I certainly can't. Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of like a Jerry Seinfeld routine. Who are these people anyway? You know, I mean, it's just amazing. It is just amazing. I mean, we're living in. We they say we're living in interesting times, but we're not. We're living in satirical times. Yeah, we're living in the kind of times that you would maybe do a satire about. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, their argument was, well, that would never happen because. If he ordered a SEAL team to kill his political rival, the Congress would just impeach him immediately, and then, you know, it, hmm. but what if the Congress it, wants to take power uh, with one party over another, and they're all in on the game? So, in other words, as soon as you elect a, a guy that you want, and they have a majority in the Congress, or at least a, a, enough people that are not able to impeach, all they have to do is have a purge for a few days, and if no one doesn't, I mean, it's it's... I got to say, if, if it's, Trump, it's a license for a coup, he'll just if take Trump, them all out. If Trump wins it's this excused. election, if Trump wins this election, democracy as we know it will be over with. Right. I mean, it's a it's like a permission slip for a coup d'etat that you can advertise on television. I mean, it's it's not even a coup. It's yeah. I don't know what it's called when you announce you're going to have a coup. I, I don't know. I forget. Yeah. You know? It's just like. What's the term for that? Well, you know? he didn't want to leave office last time. This time he's going to make sure there's no way they can make him leave office. I mean, yeah. at, at least a, a coup is supposed to have happened in secret, right? It's like no one knows it happens until it happened, but apparently yeah. they can run on it now. You know? <laughs> but, you I mean, know, 
On the other hand, the good news is he's not going to live forever. Well, that's true. You know. I mean, yeah. He might. He might? <laughs> Only the good die young. Well, no, I'm not mm -hmm. saying he's not going to live to be 100. God forbid. But, you know. Anyway. Well, I mean, you know, the but it's nice that in the past 10 days that somebody whether it was Biden himself or somebody reminded him that it was time to run for president. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that was nice, you know. I mean, I, I, I don't think that he should really shy away from some of these things. I mean, look, I turned on C-SPAN the other day and I saw him at Valley Forge, not the speech, but there was like a five-minute clip where he actually visited Valley Forge, the, the park, Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, the monument and everything, and I watched it. I'd been there before, you know, it was interesting. He doesn't walk very well and things like that. And I literally, I think he should just get on television and say, I don't walk very well. <laughs> Would you rather have a guy who doesn't walk very well and is of <laughs> sound mind and isn't coming to kill my political rivals, or would you rather have a fucking nut job? I mean, he really just, I, yeah. I, I would just do it. I would just, I don't walk well. I don't feel great when I get out of bed in the morning, but I get out of bed every morning and I work all day. And if you were my age and you wanted to do it, that's what you would do too. Or you can have a nut job. I mean, you yeah. should just say the truth. Yeah, but you know, there, there are people who just, who are acolytes of Trump who just deny any of this. No, he didn't do anything wrong. But, They're out to get him. They're out to keep him from being president. You know. I mean, he should just... Let's, uh, what? And I, I want to play devil's advocate just for the sake of argument. Okay. If Trump, if Trump becomes president, I believe that the war in Ukraine would end and that we'd be out of Gaza. Uh, I could be wrong, but what do you think? I think the war in uh, Ukraine would be over because he would give it to the Russians. And, uh, I think they, he would make a deal that favored them, yeah. yeah. But it would be done. Yeah, yeah. But it, it wouldn't be a deal. It would be, he just would not give them any arms and munitions, and they would be swallowed up by Russia. Yeah, he would yep. make the same deal that Churchill and Roosevelt made and then regretted where they just said, yeah, you can just have that. And as far as ending the war in <laughs> Gaza, <laughs> I, 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 I don't call that a deal. I call it a gift. The war <laughs> in Gaza uh, is already over. You know. I mean, Ukraine and Poland and several other very large tracts of land were given to the Soviets at the end of World War II for the sake of not having any more war. Mm -hmm. Which is the same argument people are making about Ukraine now. So if they believe that argument, fine. I'm not going to discount that it's a legitimate stance. It was a stance once before. A stance of this nation, by the way. But we are still dealing with the consequences of that decision today are we not mm -hmm. and did we not for 60 years afterwards at a high cost in lives and money yeah i mean did it not lead to an immediate arms race and so so rise of nuclear proliferation for you to answer your question yes he, the war in ukraine would be over with but the ukrainians would have lost it there wouldn't be any more ukraine there wouldn't be any more ukraine I think there would be. I don't think he, I don't think he's going to capitulate on all fronts. Oh, I, think I, 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 think, I know. I totally disagree with you. I think Trump then he'd would move right into Poland. He's going to go to Poland next, and as far as we let him go, oh, they gave me this. I'll take that too. And because because yeah. Trump wants to be in good stead with with uh, with Putin, who knows he's his butt boy and he's a sucker. You know, he knows how to play him. So, I mean, my point the, the entire time with, with all of this is those beliefs are perfectly legitimate. I mean, I, I, you know, if that's not what I want, that's fine, but they are legitimate. But I would say the same thing with the Gaza Israeli issue, and we don't got to dive into it or anything. But my point is wars that end with negotiated peace never really end. Think about wars that ended with negotiated peace and think about wars that ended with one side, whether you liked it or not, 
completely and totally imposing their will over the other and ending the conflict once and for all mm -hmm. and think about, you know, how it went. Now, it's not always perfect, but I, I'm just saying, you know, think about right. it. Right. The Civil War did not end with a negotiated peace, no. right? I mm -hmm. mean, the conditions were unconditional. I mean, it, it was not a negotiated, despite what Trump uh, would have, but it was not I, I a negotiated I would argue the Civil War still exists today. In fact, uh, you could make the argument. Make, well, make, make there the... are threads. There are threads of causes of war that can never go away because of people's personal beliefs. But I'm saying, you know, World War II was not a negotiated peace. No. I mean, it was negotiated amongst the Allies, but it was not a negotiated peace for the Germans or the Japanese. The, their conditions were unconditional. The Japanese were allowed to keep their emperor. I, I didn't. They didn't negotiate to keep their emperor. They were allowed, as a gesture of goodwill, to keep their emperor. They didn't go on a boat, on a ship, on a carrier, and sign a document that was negotiated. They were told to show up and sign it, whether they liked it or not, and that's exactly well, what they did. The now, emperor, world, now, World War I gave ended his, in a negotiated The peace. emperor gave his uh, acquiescence to that. If he had not, Japan would not have surrendered. It was the emperor tipping his hat. Japan would have been fine to keep going. It was the two nuclear... It was our two... The U.S., the first power and only power to use nuclear weapons. I don't think it was uh, the emperor. I may be wrong, but I don't think it was the emperor of Japan. No, he did. The truce. I think he it was said to lay down their weapons. They and, and it was the nuclear bombs as well. It was the nuclear bombs that convinced the emperor to oh, yeah. finally make a statement. If we had not dropped the bombs and if the emperor had not said it, they would have kept going. In fact, there were members of the Japanese military that did keep going all the way through the 1970s. Oh, they were on um, islands out in the Pacific, uh, yeah. thinking the <laughs> war was still on. Yeah, in Guam. Yeah, right. Guam. I never yeah. not saying otherwise, but th but that's what I'm saying is, <clears throat> but it was not a negotiation that they were convinced by overwhelming force or atrocity, whether whatever you want to label it, they were still convinced that it was not negotiated. They didn't sit at a table for weeks at a time beforehand and say, if you do this, we'll do that. If you do this, we'll do that. We did something right. so overwhelming that in an instant they said, this war is over. And we said, yes, and it is over on our terms. You will ask for nothing. I mean, you know, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Wow. Everyone got together in a, in a rail car in 1918 and, and signed a bunch of papers to end World War I, and nobody got a damn thing they wanted, and 20 years later... Mm -hmm. Where there was more smoke, there was more fire. I mean, did, did we negotiate peace in Vietnam? How'd that work out? Did we negotiate peace in Korea? How'd that work out? Did we negotiate peace in, you know, Iraq and Afghanistan? How'd that work out? I mean, you, I mean, those conflicts well, really we, never what, end. What, we just what, act what, like what, they did. We didn't exactly negotiate anything in Vietnam. We just got the hell out, declared ourselves. Yeah, I mean, we declared saying, ourselves but, a winner, which right, we so weren't. In the case of Ukraine, Russia. Ukraine is not going to defeat Russia, but Russia could defeat Ukraine. It's just a, it's a matter of time and, amount, and the amount of money that the West is willing to spend, right? Well, I, I will never believe that the Ukrainians cannot. They don't have to defeat Russia. They just have to evacuate them from their borders. And I will never not believe that that is not possible with the right amount of support because I believe that the president of Ukraine and I believe that the Ukrainian people hold the same belief about their soil that I would hold about mine if the Russians were here, which is that I would burn my home to the ground and everything within sight of it before I would ever give it to them. Oh, so you have to realize that. Exactly. In, in Donbass, in some regions, there are Russian speakers and Russian ethnic peoples. They may not be a majority, in, but in some regions, they are. And, and, well, Should they not the have Ukrainian, the ability to the, vote on The their? Ukrainian national language is Russian. Yeah. So you, you know, that's right. You're, you, so I mean, you're wrong about that. It's just Russian anyway. You know. Well, these are yeah. legacies. These are legacy items from the Second World War. I mean, mm -hmm. and and yeah. and the the Iron Curtain that came after. I mean, they are legacies of the fact that the Soviets occupied them until the fall of communism, and it was an occupation. It was not. They weren't invited. To keep, you know, I mean, they weren't invited to stay. It was an occupation. Hmm. I mean, you know, that, I mean, that's just historical fact. Yeah.
Yeah, we lost. I mean, if there are some within Ukraine's borders that wish they were Russian, that's fine. But there's obviously not that many because they fight the Russians tooth and nail every day for years now. And they swear there's no end in sight. And I say good for them. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even hyperbolizing that. If the Russians invaded this country, I swear to God, I'll burn this motherfucker from one end to the other before I ever gave them a fucking inch of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and if they taught us nothing, that's what they would do. If I had to go to the hills and fight as a Cossack, that's what, and cut heads off and hang people, that's exactly what I would do before I gave them one county. But the stance that some people take is the legitimate... You know, the, the argument is, well, they've invaded the United States. We fought them for three years. They only hold California, Oregon, and Washington. For the sake of the United States, we should just give it to them. That's the equivalent. And I'd be damned could, could if we, I could we, them well, Pardon me, beach. pardon me, pardon me. Could we make it Florida? Is that a possibility? <laughs> Maybe we could talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, now, if other people say, no, I would negotiate peace, fine. That, that That's fine. I mean, that's what I've said. You're just that saying, is you're, a legitimate you're, idea, but I don't believe military history proves it out, and I wouldn't do it. I would. In other words, I what would, you're I saying, what you're saying, what you're saying, that, that what you're saying, Josh, is you've got to win it. In my belief, yes. I, I mean, I, think, I, think, I believe that that's what Winston Churchill believed. I believe that that's what Ulysses S. Grant believed, and their words tell us so. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ulysses S. S. Grant said, "My terms of surrender are unconditional." When you lay down your weapons, the war ends. Until that point, I will go on to the death. Winston yeah. Churchill said, there will be no negotiated peace. And now you must each do as you see fit if you disagree with me. Mm -hmm. But I am the prime minister, and I will not negotiate peace. You know and had who, he negotiated you know who, well, you know peace else, when they wanted him to, you the know world who, would look different today. You know who else said that? Brian. Hello, yeah. Brian. <laughs> okay. But, uh, it's I just mean, that so everybody... Like I said, I, I, it's not to say that I'm right. I'm just saying <clears throat> yeah. that's what I think based on what I've learned. Anybody here <clears throat> want to get their two cents worth in on this? Yeah. My, my question is about Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, what, what did we do at the end? I mean, well, we I did. We did a that. very strategic we withdrawal. Left. We That's left. Purple? We left, and then said we won. Yeah. Is this the so purple? Cross out, cross out Vietnam and write purple, Afghanistan. Purple? What? Yeah. What's the difference? Purple, cross yes. out the word Vietnam and write Afghanistan. What's the difference, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, did we win anything in Afghanistan? Is free? I thought it was free. Didn't you? Oh, okay. I thought it was free. What's free? <laughs> He's buying his drugs. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> it's, a, it's the same, you know. I mean, make, right. it, they're not always one and one in comparisons. I'm just saying, you know. I mean, who rules Afghanistan today? Same people that ruled it when we showed up, right? I mean, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's what we did. We we said the world terror is over, and we left, and you know. But but we went. But everyone kept saying, "Negotiate with the Taliban. Negotiate with." The, I mean, I, I, I'm just. Yeah. And I'm not completely crazy with this. I'm t I mean, I went to the same class. I took classes with non-commissioned and commissioned officers at the United States military and this is the doctrine that they teach them at the US Army War College, at the Naval War College that you got to follow your political leaders, but when it comes to battle, negotiations typically do not work. Right. You so know, you got to you, you got to win win the war. Oh, I mean, you know, they, they teach U.S. Grant and his memoirs today that, I mean, you yeah. know, yeah. what what did U.S. stand for? It stood for unconditional surrender. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he would get a letter that would ask for terms of peace, and he would say there are no terms of peace. There are none. I mean, it was just so simple for them. And it's not, I mean, it's not always like that. So, in other words, the, the, uh, the, attitude the, that, the attitude that Israel to. has right now that we're going to take over Gaza and run mm -hmm. Gaza is pretty much the only solution, right? Well, I think they view it that way through military doctrine. Mm -hmm. Now, I never said things were right, but I said this is what doctrine shows right. as long term holds long term success. Right now, their stance that I uh, happen to probably agree with is that 
if Hamas lays down their weapons, throws up their hands and comes out and gives up, we'll stop the war. But Hamas isn't going to do that. You know, I mean, so the Washington Post, CNN and others are, are reporting that over 4,000 Israeli troops have been wounded in, in battle. Uh, right. Bullet wounds, uh, IED, whatever. Mm-hmm. So someone is shooting at the Israeli troops, right? I mean, they're not shooting each other. I mean, someone is shooting at them. They're getting hurt somehow. So right. I'm saying from the Israeli point of view, they're saying we're still in a hostile environment. Right. And their stance is not to negotiate. Now, mm-hmm. I can support their stance not to negotiate. I don't know that I support some of the things that a few of their crazy people have said. Which sounds like they want to basically just, you know, commit genocide on a mass scale as soon as they can occupy the whole land. I don't support that, you know, because that doesn't fix wars. I mean, you know, all that does is cause another, you know, but the United States isn't going to support, isn't going to support. I mean, they're going to run into the same thing with, with the rest of these issues, these Houthi rebels and all this other stuff. I mean, is the United States... is is a U.S. warship going to negotiate with Houthi rebel pirates? No. Oh. <laughs> There'll be no negotiation. You will stop shooting at that ship. Do you think? We're, we'll do you think we're taking? You. Do you think we're taking the right tack there? What? What? what let me that group let me hear. People? Let me hear from some of the other people. Are you familiar? Yeah, yeah. Are you people familiar with what's happening with the Houthis? In uh, mm-hmm. Houthi and the Blowfish. Yes, no. Houthi and the, the Houthi, Houthis and the Blowfish. <laughs> Yeah, when they sink a ship, they're blowfish down there. And there. Um, no, but are you aware, all, all aware of what we're talking about? Yeah, they're attacking uh, ships in the in the ships Suez. Trying to go through the Suez Canal to the Mediterranean, and they're and pretty much blocking that. So you have to go all the way around the tip of Africa. So we've wow. gone in and out with our jets and so on, and are blowing up Houthi. Uh, uh, facilities in Yemen. Mm, yeah. So the question is, are we at war? That's, at what point do you say you're at war? That's what I don't understand. Um, I, I think it's a war. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, one, joking, war. one company has one was 12 missiles mm-hmm. that they can shoot at us. But we got two ships there that are totally loaded out that they could blow up anyone in the world in in, uh, in a half an hour. Yeah, but the Hooties are not giving in, man. They're saying they're just well, going to keep doing what they're doing. No, I got... In fact, they shot a missile today and it didn't even come close to hitting anything. That's... <laughs> you know... Uh, that whole the whole uh, the whole Mid East is is a real pain in the ass problem. <laughs> what happened to Kevin? Where did he go? Man, no, disappeared. Just kind of disappeared. Maybe he's been kidnapped. What? Uh, the hooties. The, the hooties, hooties got him. The hooties got him. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's always then the U.S. got to be the police everywhere. You know. Yeah. Well, y- yeah. Um, I, I I don't know what the reason why we would go in to defend the Suez when that's really, I think, the job of Egypt and the surrounding countries there. Uh, but why we're doing it, I think, has to do with some kind of commerce. That's yeah. what it's all about. Sure. It costs a lot more to go all the way around Africa. Oh, yeah, oh. and therefore the cost of goods would go up in the United States and so on. So... Let's kill some people over that, and they should kill us over that. Okay. Mm. Um, I don't know. I it, it's just it's just ridiculous, you know. Oh, uh, the ships that they fire on, many of them are American flag ships, though. I mean, yeah. One of the doctrines that this country practices that yeah. I'm in favor of is it protects Americans everywhere. Yeah. Not just on American soil. Right. right. If you and I and five or six other people operate a ship somewhere and we're attacked by a foreign entity, the United States of America will come to our aid. You know, I mean, I'm personally proud of the fact that the United States of America does that. It's one of the few countries that in a way that will, 
Hmm. I mean, not and, and that has the ability to. Well, we, we haven't done that. very well at getting back uh, host, American hostages from Gaza. Well, that's because it's nearly impossible to do. But this country has rescued hostages before when it was possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's a woman named Jessica Buchanan who was held for six or eight weeks by Somali kidnappers after an aid mission to Somalia. And while President Obama about 10 years ago gave the State of the Union, a SEAL team went in there and got her out, killed every last one of them. And how, how she, did, how, she goes around still to this day and tells her story and bawls her eyes out when she says that 12 guys got on one helicopter and she got on the second helicopter by herself. And one of those guys took an American flag out of a backpack and said, on behalf of a grateful nation, you're going home and handed it to her and walked away. I mean, it's one of the, I mean, she's one of the most emotional people you could ever hear telling her story. When she tells about the fact that when they found out she had a kidney infection and she was near death and they wouldn't let the Red Cross in, that President Obama said it's time. And I mean, they put a lot of people's lives at risk that one night to save one person. Yeah. Twelve guys and two helos, two pilots mm. each. I mean, that's 16 people in a hostile nation. Anything could happen. A helo could crash. It could go awry. You just never know. And, you know. What other country in the world will 12 people who have never met you and aren't even allowed to tell you their own names or introduce themselves come get you, go away, and never say a word? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm, I'm just afraid of what, if Trump would get in office, what he's going to give up and not tell anybody until we find out too late. Fair to stop everything. Well, you know, for anybody who wants to yell and scream about, about Biden, uh, wouldn't you rather have him as a president right now with all these problems in the world than Trump? Because Absolutely. Trump doesn't know how to handle them. Yes. Uh, uh, There's the building. Uh, yeah, so you asked, and there I did it. I'm over here now. That's the world's second tallest building. In the world. In the world, Now, yeah. does that include that little mass they put up there? I, I think, yeah, they might be cheating a little bit. Because they always, <laughs> add, no, all these buildings add a mask. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. First Khalifa yeah. has a little bit. Yeah. This, uh, this district is, is Chinatown. It's, uh, it's a, a lot of tourists will come here. Uh, there's a, there's a day and night market over on the right. So whenever you, and then Central Market is over near the Central train station. So if you come to KL, you'll walk these streets. Yeah. Now, what else There's is a lot the, of is KL a good place for a vacation? Oh, it's excellent. I mean, Malaysia in general is a great place. First of all, you're going to save a lot because the costs for everything are, are very inexpensive. Here you can see, you know, uh, food costs. So for less than a dollar, you can get a chicken wing. You get a and, chicken uh, wing, a chicken wing. Yeah. For a dollar, yeah. a chicken wing. Well, 80 cents. For a chicken wing. Yeah. How much is here? Right? You've got, yeah, you can get fried potatoes. Uh, well, they, these are tourist prices, actually. These ones are a little more expensive than normal, uh, I think. Yeah. But can there are a the, lot of. Can you go to the international sorry. international uh, area where all the hookers are? <laughs> oh, that's Chang Cat. Uh, yeah, actually, I have to head to that re that area because I'm going to the electronics mall. Oh, uh, I think you were saying you had to get yourself a blowjob. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll no, pick, I got that I, yesterday, so. Yeah, I, I, think, yeah, I think I'll have to, I have to pick up a quick blowjob before I uh, uh, leave. Well, that's, you can get that if that's what you want. I well, mean, by, the way, by, the way, by the way, last night's show was almost exclusively um, uh, devoted to talking about Costco. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. My boss says there's a there's a good podcast that in I forget what it's called. I'll get it and send. But <laughs> it, and it's these these rivalries that have happened, like in business. I told him we were talking about that last night. But um, he was talking. He just finished the one with uh, IBM, I guess PlayStation and and you know, Microsoft and Sony were going after. Yeah, Charlie, you know this one after a. Uh, uh, they're both getting a, a chip from uh, IBM, and one of the companies was having an issue with it, so they had to revamp it and, and all this stuff that was going on. Mm. But, yeah. 
Yeah, they, they have a, it's a really good podcast. They say that they, they have these rivalries that these big business companies have had. It's yeah. a good podcast. Uh, he said something about the Costco's on that one, too. Yeah, well, I, uh, I was watching a couple of things on Costco today, looking for the one on YouTube that you suggested. Uh, oh, yeah, that has the... Like, yeah. Well, Kevin suggested, yeah. Uh, and I watched I sent one. you the link. I sent you the link. Yeah, but I uh, and I I'm gonna put probably bring it up here on my computer, and then it will wind up on my uh, YouTube yeah. on my uh, thing here. But any, anyway, because I like to watch it on the big screen. But anyway, I watched a couple of documentaries about it today, and I didn't realize that they make something what a hundred. Did I read uh, listen correctly? A hundred and fifty billion dollars a year. Worldwide, yep. I I didn't realize they made that much money. Well, they were in competition with Walmart too, and Walmart's at a uh, million dollars a minute. Oh, yeah. wow! Wow! Oh, uh, hot dogs. And they, <laughs> and this I watched this one. This woman did, and she talked about the asterisk. And yeah, when yeah. something is nine ninety nine or something that's yeah. ninety nine, ninety eight or ninety nine, that, that, that's yeah. the permanent price. But then if it's like ninety seven, it's something else. And if it's ninety yeah, seventy nine and ninety nine, yeah, cents. Yeah, yeah. they they all they, money, they all have yeah. different meanings, and you yeah. have to know what they are. Yeah. But Home Depot you, does the same thing. If you see the price with an asterisk on it at the store, uh, that means uh, that's going to be the price only for a while. And then they're getting and rid it's of on it. its way out. It's on its way out. Yeah, yeah. But that uh, that documentary was the one that I saw, and it was on the History Channel, and that has also four or five episodes on it, and it's about the mega mega businesses. Yeah, and m that Microsoft thing was in there too, on how oh really uh, those competitions and things like that were on there. Yeah, on these huge corporations and how they evolved and where they came from like this you know Saul Price he's the one that started Price right, Club right he actually uh, started FedMart back in the day and FedMart was a runoff of a, a what do you call it like a commissary type thing for the military mm. and he that was called Fed Fed store Fed something and he called his FedMart and started the membership thing and then he and then there was this whole competition with membership and then he got in bed with this other guy and then Walton tried to steal him away and he told him to go fuck himself and went and signed away his company to um Fred something or other signed away 51% of the company mm -hmm. and then got screwed of course because he w tried to go public, and he he went public, and then decided not to go public, and the guy bought him out for fifty one percent. It's it's a neat story. Yeah, so. it's a whole. But what's also interesting is that uh, they said that uh, uh, what was it uh, that uh, uh, who was it? What was it? Was it uh, they have? Oh yeah, this is what it was. The Costco has a hundred and twenty million uh, subs. Uh, Members worldwide. Remember? Yeah, so you, that was like 150 or something. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's amazing, amazing. Uh, That's how they make all their money off. Those well, they're the biggest companies in the world, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, they're they're bigger than Apple. They're no, they're they're like one of the hundred biggest uh, retailers. They, had, they put them in a category. Um, it was a retailer, and it's like. The 150th well, Microsoft the 150th. Microsoft yeah. just topped Apple uh, uh, they're always going back and forth yeah and the reason is because of AI because of the AI company they bought could be yeah yeah so you know and of course everybody hates AI right the latest thing is they some guy um, what was the guy's name he's an actor um, I'm trying to remember his name now but he and another guy got together and they did a virtual George Carlin concert. Oh, yeah. Heard and they, about by it. AI, they used Can't Carlin's voice and had the AI generate the comedy. Yeah. And now the Carlin family is thinking about suing big time. <laughs> well, I mean, somewhere along the line, there have to be limits on, on, on what people can do with AI. 
that infringes on copyright, on likeness. Well, that and was so the whole reason so for the strike, right? Yeah. Well, I don't think you need a strike. Well, it was for that. part. You know, that was part of it. I think you just need people suing them a lot when they do it. I don't think we should not allow AI. I don't think that's the point. I think that we, we, should, we should live with technology, but we shouldn't let people use it for no good. And that's the, you know, and you should be able to sue for that. Somebody tried to do this show using my likeness generated by AI long after I'm gone. That would be wrong. Probably would never happen, you know. But that's what I'm going to do, it. Alex. Damn it, just screw I'm already planning it. You're already planning just it? Gonna, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's going to be my retirement fund. You know, I'm going to get this monetization from YouTube. I'm going to make it work. <laughs> well, I'm thinking of maybe, of maybe through AI doing my likeness and having my show written by AI and just backing off here and probably will get a bit more listeners doing it that way than the way I'm doing it now. You know. but I think the bad thing is when you have a personality and they're selling a product that mm. they're not even selling a product, but it's AI. You know, you yeah. have somebody famous, George Clooney, starts saying, you know, you see a commercial with George Clooney on there or a likeness, right. you know, and doing AI and talking and it looks just like he's talking. Uh, yes, yes, Alan. Wherever Bree's at, Kuala Lumpur is very safe. He has walked the streets for almost an hour with his phone out in front of him, and nobody's ran up and <laughs> grabbed it. Chopped off his wrist. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. And if they would, it would be these guys on the motorcycles. You know, they would shy, but... No, oh, you're it's pretty Vietnam, safe they grab you on the motorcycle. Yes. Well, yeah. by, the way, by the way, we have good news. You know, the murder rate is down in, in the United States. For the first time in... It's the lowest it's been in something like 50 years or something. Wow. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know what Trump's going to be able to run on. Oh, well, like he said the other night, it's because he's leading in the polls. So everything's dropping. Everything's going better now because he's leading in the polls. Yeah. It's all about him. Oh, Thank I see. You. Okay, I get it. <laughs> it's so funny to see these Republican uh, debates. It's like, what, what, why? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right. we're fi we're fighting for the uh, for the the absolute bottom. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it it's just amazing. But anyway, look, is Charlie asleep? No, I guess he's not. Oh, oh, well. Goes and off. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to bed early because there's a lot of football this weekend, and we yeah. have Monday okay. off. Go so. Steelers! Before we before we leave. Please tell us what oh, are the major Steelers. games this weekend that everybody should pay attention to. Steelers, all the, the way. Eagles are playing. The 49ers, oh, 49ers have a week off. Uh, yeah. Cincinnati's That's playing. Like Cowboys what? are playing. Cincinnati Eagles are playing. Steelers playing. are playing. And and he, uh, he Cleveland is playing. Yep, Cleveland's playing. Yeah. But the Steelers are the lowest of the low. They're like six thousand to one odds. So like, go bet a dollar. You're gonna win six thousand. <laughs> I think Eagles are probably lower now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the, and the how about Steelers the Steelers are finally? Oh, how about the yeah, they how finally about the, got a team? How about the worst team ever, the Cowboys? <laughs> yeah, they're not so bad. Although they could bet lose. Two, bet two dollars. I'll bet you there will be a lot of of uh, text going back and forth between a bunch yeah. of guys on this panel. <laughs> it's terrible because the Eagles play last, and I hate when they play yeah. last because yeah. I can't either talk shit or just turn everything off all weekend so i gotta wait well anyway i got the theme playing here which you can't hear obviously happy chinese new year year of the dragon coming up year of the dragon yeah. coming up okay in chinatown and they're all going chinese new year happy here yeah well i want to thank uh first of all our good friend brian uh kevin for being here rather and then uh josh wheeler always pleasure josh love your comments uh, Brian Neary, have a nice weekend with all those football games you love. And you too, Charlie. And uh, do you watch football over there, Bree? Yo, Steelers, you better believe it. Oh, okay. Do you get all the games you want? We be People say we're out. We beat the Ravens twice. It was not even, a it was not even an issue. 
come on. Okay. Ravens are supposed to be number one. Steelers beat them twice. Yeah, and yeah. let's let's thank Alan for being here and thank Jeff for being here and everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. Wait a minute. First, I got to go back to me here. There we go. Oh, boy. Well, that's it for tonight. Boy, has this been a uh, an evening. Uh, coming up next is... Uh, is Amy Manuel. She's here with the intersection. And then I will see you again on Monday. We'll be here for the pop up show at 4 o'clock on uh, Facebook. And then uh, we'll see you again on, uh, what is it, Wednesdays. But same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, of course, tell her I love her. All right. Bye bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.